My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, Official Guide to the Revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 300. Page number 300, today is our lesson number 247. Page number 300. I'm going to quickly do something here. Ah, there you go, up to page number 241. Here is what happened. Since this is our very last problem in the book here, before the exams, I'm just going to quickly tell you the layout of the entire process here, in case you're wondering what exactly transpired in up to day number 246. What happened was, the first 200 days, day 1 through 200, I was solving the problems that appeared in the first edition of, this, of the GRE. The very first edition of the GRE book, revised GRE book that is, that appeared, that was published in last summer, summer of 2011. And I spent 200 days doing almost all the problems in this book, almost all of them except the last three or four problems, which is what I'm doing right now. And I spent 200 days on it. And lucky for me, when the second edition came out, second edition came out on the 1st of August. Today, as I speak, is the 5th of August, 2012. Five days ago, the second edition came out. The book that I just showed you, it came on market less than a week ago. The second edition of the revised GRE. And when this book came out, lucky for me, all the problems in this book were the exact same problem as the one that appeared in the first edition. Not only they were the exact same problems, but they all appeared on the exact same page number. With the exception of only two problems, believe it or not. In the entire book, there were only two problems that were different. Only two. So instead of having to redo every single thing, which is what I was dreading, I didn't have to do this thing. So what I did was, I spent the first 41 days I spent the first 41 days, day 201 to day 41, I spent the first 41 days telling you where the problems are located in the first edition on which day. First, describing the layout of these problems. And then starting from page Starting from day 242, I have been doing the problems that I, that I had not had a chance to do in the first edition because the second edition had already come out, which is what I've been doing here. And today is our day number 247, and today is our very last problem. And after that, we have four exams, and hopefully I will get to those exams soon. I'm not sure about whether or not I want to actually do that. But anyway, this is today is our very last problem. We are on page number... 300, problem number 19. Problem number 19. It says, in 2003, in 2003, family used 49% of their income on two categories. And they do not tell you which two categories they are. Of course, it is our job to figure out which two categories add up to 49%. They're telling us that there exist two categories where if you were to add up how much they spend their percentages, it comes out with 49%. The question is, what was the amount spent on the same two categories the following year, in 2004? So our first job is to figure out which two categories they're talking about. There are seven categories. Let's list them all. Seven or eight categories. We'll list them all. The first, so this is 2003 we're dealing here. The first one is taxes, which is 31% approximately. Then we have mortgage. Mortgage is approximately 24%, and as we can clearly see, 24 and 24 and 31 will not add up to 49%. We need to add them to a, we need them to add up to 49%. So those are not the two categories we're talking about. Then we have then we have food, which is about 7%. We have miscellaneous, 
which is about 3%, we have auto, which is about 7%, and then we have utilities, then we have utilities, which is about 4%. As we realize right now that looking at all of these categories, food, miscellaneous, auto and utilities was actually a waste of, ta waste of time. Because we can clearly see from the graph that they are all less than 10%. All of them as you can clearly see from the graph, they are less than 10%. And if they are less than 10%, then something less than 10% plus 24 is not going to add up to 49. Something less than 10% plus 31 is not going to add up to 49. So it must be the last one, the savings. The savings we are told is 24 percent. Saving is 24 percent. What do you know? The mortgage, oh sorry, savings is 25 percent. So what do you know? Mortgage plus mortgage plus savings comes out to be exactly 49%. So those are the two categories we're talking about, mortgage and savings. In 2004, so, so that now we know which two categories we're talking about. Now we can do our work in 2004. In 2004, mortgage is about 27%. If you look at the chart, I close the book here, I should go back to it, page, page number 300. If you look at the chart for 2004, mortgage is about 27% and savings drops to 12%. So that comes out with 39%. So now the question is, so now the question is, what is 39% of 2004 income and we know that income in 2004 they tell us that the income in 2004 the gross income it will tell you at the bottom of the graph is 45,000 45,000 or 50,000 oh sorry I misread it it is 45,000 what the hell yes it is 45,000 all right so the question is what is 39% of 45,000. Let's translate this thing into plain, let's translate this uh, English language sentence into algebraic equation. What means unknown, which is our x, is means equals 39% means over 100, of means times 45,000. 45,000, which I'm going to write that as 45 times 1,000. You will see in a second why. Divide the top and bottom by 100. These two zeros cancel out with this part. And we are left with 39 times, 39 times 45 times 10. Let's do it here. Now, even though they provide you the calculator in the exam, I generally prefer not to touch the bloody thing. So here, we have to figure out 39 times 45. Multiplying by 10 is very easy. 39 times 45. 39 times 45. I hope you are able to see that this is same as this is same as 40 times 45 minus 45. If you have if you have 40 45s, so listen carefully. If you have 40 45s, and from those 40 45, if you were to take away 145, that is same as 39 45s. Why am I doing it this way? Because it's very easy to figure out what 40 times 45 is. Trust me, it's very easy. 40 times 45, but do not think of this as uh, in terms of 40 times 45. Think of this in terms of 4 times 45. Now, 4 times 45 is very easy to figure out. The double of 45 is 90. When you double something, you're multiplying the number by 2. And double of 90 is 180. So, 4 times 45 is 180. Since 4 times 45 is 180, 40 times 45 must be 1800. 1800 minus 45. 1800 minus 45 is same as 1800 times 50 would have been 1750. So it's going to be 17, 
55. 17, 55. And don't forget, we have a 10 here at the end. We have a 10 over. This part was only just 39 times 45, and then we have a times 10. So we have to multiply this number by 10. So it turns out that x is 17,550. Well, that's our final answer. Let me just check in the book very quickly, make sure I did not make a boo-boo. 17,550, the answer is right opposite of the page there. That's, that's, that's what they give us. That was it. Let's do part B, shall we? Let's do part B. In part B, they're asking us, of the seven categories, which one has, has, which one has greatest increase in expenditure? Of the seven categories, of the seven categories, which one has the greatest increase in expenditure? Well, let's find out, shall we? Which one? We're going to just go one by one until we find something that, that works. Number one is taxes. Now if you look at the category, if you look at the, if you look at the bar for income tax, you will see that actually income tax bar for the income tax actually goes down. There's a drop in the income tax. Taxes went down. That's the novelty. So that's not it. What does the word novel mean? Novel means unique, one of a kind, extraordinary, something that is not mundane, something that is not banal, something that is not ordinary, something that is not hackneyed, tried, something that is not cliché. You will learn all of these words in the vocabulary videos if you're interested, as I said before, in improving your vocabulary. I'm not sure if I said it today or yesterday. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, you can learn all of these words and some more which will help you raise your score in the English portion of the exam. Banal and hackneyed and novel is something that we covered on day number 13. Day number 13. Just type in vocabulary, day 13, and you will learn all of these words, as I said. Hackneyed, cliche, banal, tried, mundane, prosaic. These are all, they all basically mean the same thing. which are all antonyms of novel. Novel is something unique, something all extraordinary. I'm just being sarcastic. The taxes actually went down. That's unheard of. So that's not it. The second category is mortgage. Mortgage is used to be 24% of 150. Let's do it on the top here. Let's start with the mortgage. used to be 24% of 150 and it went to 27% of 175. So we see an increase of about 3% there, which is not exactly proper. I know that it's not exactly proper for me to say that because it's a different amount. It's a different amount. But it doesn't matter. Do you know why it doesn't matter? Because whatever I said, just the nonsense that I just said there, if I keep saying the same nonsense every time, it washes itself out. Because the same exact thing is going to happen in every single category. We'll see in a second. Food is 7% of 150. It went from 7% of 150 to 11% of 175. You see it's the same deal, 150 and 175, it appears everywhere. So here we see a change of 4%. Here it was a change of, here it was 24 to 27, it was 3%. This is 4%, so this is already out because we're looking for the greatest one. Miscellaneous, miscellaneous went from 3% of 150 to 11% of 
of one, 175. Well, what do you know? No, 10%, sorry. Miscellaneous went from 3 to 10%. 3 to 10% is an increase of 7%. It's an increase of 7%. This was 7 to 11, that was an increase of only 4%. We already found 7, so that was our food. Auto actually went down, so that's not it. If you look at the bar graph for the auto, it actually went down, so that's not it. Utilities. Utilities was 4% of 150 to 5% of 175. So that's an increase of only 1%. Here we see an increase of 7% from 3 to 10. So that rules out utilities. And finally, savings actually went down. So that's not it. So the winner is miscellaneous. It went from 3% to 10%. Albeit 3% of 150 to 7 to 10% of 775, but since the same nonsense is taking place in every single category, those figures are same for every one of them. Like I said, it's going to wash it, wash itself out, and you can just look at the ch change in percentage. From 3 to 10% is 7%, even though it's a different base. I realize that it doesn't matter. We're doing the approximation. So that was it. The answer is the answer is miscellaneous. Answer is B. And that was the wrap up of this long journey that began, I believe on the March 1st of 2012 is when I started the day number one, when I did, when I did the first day out of this book here, the revised GRE. This book came out in August of 2011, but, did, but I did not start solving problems out of this book until March 1st of this year, 2012. And from March 1st, 2012 to today, today which is August 5th of 2012. It took that long to actually finish the journey. But we made it. Only thing that is left in this book now, in the new book, the only thing that is left in this new book are the four exams, which I'm not sure if I want to do them, because obviously we don't want to give the game away completely. The idea is to entice your curiosity, to, to, to prompt you, to call me if you need help, if you're looking for a tutor. That was the idea. And I have been getting quite a few responses actually, but that was the idea. I'm not sure if I want to sit there and do all four problems, but I will see, things change. But right now I'm done. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you on the exam. As I said, if you need to get hold of me, send me an email, go to my website. There are, there are the website addresses there, prepforgre.com, or you can simply go to keshpaniprep.com and you will get hold of me. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you. Bye now.